Go home, all of you. Study your school books and don't rush. You look like good books when you rush. Oh, I was so scared. I still am. I can hardly breathe. Not me. He looks like a silly old giraffe. Percy? With a long neck. I bet he even eats leaves from trees. Are you going to tell your mother? I'm not. My mother would be upset. Oh, I won't either. Mom would probably scold me for running on the street. We'll keep it just between us then. Good. Now, Christy, there's no need to tell Mama. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. Cheerio, team I go on my way. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye.
go to Tivoli Gardens. We'll make our own Tivoli. Let's do the play. Please, not the Little Mermaid. No, let's do the one that starts with the King and Queen. And they have beautiful daughters. All right, do you know your part, Samory? Again. Samory. Yes, Father. Once upon a time, there was a king and... And a queen. Don't forget the queen. And a queen. They lived together in a beautiful palace. Was the palace named Emilia Lord? Shh! Quit interrupting me or we'll never finish the play. No, it wasn't Amelia Borg. It was a pretend palace. This is a princess in tonight, Your Highness. You made a princess Christian first? No, I'm not in. I'm having a tea party with the king of Denmark. A tea party? Yes, with St. Cupcakes. And how is King Christian today? He's fine. He's out riding on his horse. Like that time with Lise. He waved at us and Lise said, Now you're a special forever, because you have been greeted by a king. No fair. This is my story. Sorry, Kirsty. I was just Princess Kirsty. King. He is the king of Denmark. But where is his bodyguard? All of Denmark is his bodyguard. Is it true, Papa? What the lady in waiting said? Yes, it is true. Any Danish citizen would die for King Christian to protect him. You too, Papa? Yes. And Mama? Mama too. Then I would too, if I had to. And I would too, but I'd rather not. <laughs> you don't have to, Princess, but you do have to go to bed. Too many cupcakes. I know. I'm so full, my eyes are bulging out. Good night, Your Majesty. Good night, Your Grace. Good night, Anne-Marie. And you weren't too afraid. Papa, sometimes I wonder why the king couldn't protect us. Why he let the German soldiers come into Denmark with their guns? We are such a tiny country, and they are such an enormous enemy. Our king was wise. He knew how few Danish soldiers we had. He knew how many Danish citizens would die if we fought. In Norway, they fought. They fought fiercely in Norway, but they had those huge Norwegian mountains for the Norwegian soldiers to fight in. Even so, Norway was crushed. Are there German soldiers in Norway now? Same yes. here? Yes, and in Belgium and France. But not Sweden. Nope, that is true. Sweden is still free. Just across the water. Not 20 miles. Free. No soldiers. Hurry and get ready, girls. 
Oh dear, look. This button was broken right in half on Lisa's sweater. Mama, that's my sweater. Yes, dear, it's yours now. In ring, take Kirsty with you after school to the little shop where Mrs. Mrs. Hirsch sells thread and buttons. See if you can get just one to match the other. It shouldn't cost very much. I'll give you some crumbs. Oh, didn't you know, Mama? The button shop's closed. There's a padlock on the door and a sign written in German. I wonder if Mrs. Hirsch is sick. I saw her Saturday. She was with her husband and her son. They all look just fine. Well, not Samuel. Alan loves Samuel. I do not. He looks goofy, and his bicycle has wooden wheels. All of our bicycles have wooden wheels. There's no rubber. I think the Hershes all went on vacation to the seashore. Are you sure? We can always find a button someplace else. Or take one from the bottom of the sweater and move it up. Are you sure the sign was in German? Maybe you didn't look carefully enough. Mama, it had a swastika on it. Girls, finish getting ready and have some breakfast. Alan, please stay. Where are you going? I have to talk to Mrs. Rose. Thank you. 
to go to a fish store. I bet most mothers wouldn't make their daughters wear ugly fish shoes. Now, Kirsty, you know it wasn't a fish store, and we're lucky to find shoes at all. Show them. Show Anne Marie and Ellen how ugly they are. You know there's no leather, but they found a way to make shoes out of fish skin. I don't think they are too ugly. Oh, they're awful, Kirsty. A perfect match. Susan, talk. You're really helping things. No. It's only the color that's ugly. Green, I will never, ever wear green shoes. In our apartment, my father has a jar of black, black shoes. Would you like these shoes better if they were black? Maybe I would. Well, then, tonight, if your mama doesn't mind, I'll take the shoes home with us, and my father can make them black for you with his teeth. I think that would be a fine improvement, Kirsty. What do you think? All right, then. But you mustn't tell anyone to fish. I don't want anyone to know. Doing? Why are you dressed so funny? We're not doing anything, right, Anne Marie? <laughs> yes, we were. We were doing a play. Oh, good. Can I be the princess? There's no princess. The queen, then. I'll be the queen. There's no queen either. No princess? No queen? What kind of play is that? <laughs> it's a play about a beautiful young woman and her admiring suitor. Anne Marie. I'll be Ellen's little sister. Oh, it's not about me. Yes, it is. It's about you and Samuel. Oh, I'm playing Samuel. My, you look handsome tonight, Samuel. Why are you taking the beautiful Princess Ellen? I'm nowhere. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I was hoping your grace would accompany me to tonight's celebration at Tivoli Gardens. I could ride on the back of his bicycle, and you could ride on the handlebars. I'm not going to Tivoli. Tivoli, <coughs> oh my Tivoli, I haven't been there in such a long time. Tivoli, Tivoli, Tivoli. It doesn't matter, because it's only a game anyway. Tivoli can be over there by that chair. Come, Samuel, we shall go to Tivoli to dance. Eat, come, can you watch the fireworks? Shall we bring my silly sister, the princess, along so she can run on the carousel? This is in ring, please. I remember the fireworks best of all. Me too. I remember the fireworks. Kirsty, you never saw the fireworks. I did too. It was my birthday. We had pink cupcakes. I woke up in the night and I could hear the big boom. And there were lights in the sky. Mama came in and said that the king was making fireworks for my birthday. I didn't know what was happening. I never heard so many explosions and seen so many fireworks. They just kept going and going. But not from Tivoli. From the harbor. They lit up the sky. I think it took great courage. I still can't believe all our own Danish navy blew up all of our ships just to keep the Germans from stealing them and using them in the war. How sad King Christian must have been. How proud he must have been. Why would he be sad? He did it all for my birthday. Yes, Kirsty. I don't want to play anymore. I have to go home anyway. Thursday's that new year, and I have to help Mama with the house cleaning. Your new year? Why is it in our new year, too? Oh, silly, it's the Jewish new year. That's just for us. But if you want, Kirsty, you can come and watch Mama light the candles. Yes. I will come watch your mama light the candles, and I will wear Lisa's pink sweater and my blue black shoes.
Wasn't that roast chicken wonderful, girl? Alan, be sure to tell your mother how much we enjoyed it. What's happening? Will someone please tell me what's going on? I wish I could protect you, Jill, from his knowledge. Ellen already knows. Now I must tell you, Henry. This morning at the synagogue, the rabbi told his congregation the Nazis took the synagogue list of all Jews, what their names are and where they live. And of course, the roses are on that list. But, but why do they want those names? They plan to arrest all the Jews. They plan to take them away. And we have been told they may come tonight. Take them where? We're not really sure where. We're not really sure why. It's called relocation. We're not even sure what that means. All we know is it is wrong and we must help. Is it dangerous for them? It's dangerous for them. But, but where are Ellen's parents? We need to help them too. We couldn't take all three of them. If the Nazis came to search our apartment, it would be clear that the Rosies were here. So Peter has helped Ellen's parents go someplace else. We don't know where. Peter was here? Will my parents be all right? Your parents will be fine, Ellen. I promise you that. Can you try hard to believe my promise? But Papa, you said we could hide her. Well, where can she hide? That part will be easy. It'll be as your mom said. You two will laugh and you will sleep together in your bed. But if anyone comes... Oh my God! Will there be soldiers like the ones on the corners? I really don't think anyone will come, but it never hurts to be prepared. If anyone shall come, you two will be sisters. If you are together so much, it'll be easy for you to pretend you're sisters. I'm going out. Get into your nightgowns. It'll be a long night, but don't be frightened. Tonight, I have three dollars. I used to have three dollars, and tonight I'm proud to have three dollars once again. What? Right through the whole thing. She was so little then. But I stayed. 
stayed up, and I was with your mother in the living room when my parents came home and told me that you died. I remember it was raining, and it was still raining the next morning when Mama told me. Mama was crying, and the rain was coming, the whole world was crying. Oh, what a beautiful necklace. Six points on a gold star. It's the Star of David. I think it was partly because of the rain. They said she was hit by a car, and, and I suppose the streets were slippery, and, and it was getting dark, and, well, maybe the driver just couldn't see. Papa looked so angry, he made one hand into a fist, pounding it into the other hand.
dangerous trip on yourself. No way. <gasps> if only I go, it will be safer. They are unlikely to suspect a woman with a children. But if they are watching us and they see all of us leave, that they are aware that you don't go to your office this morning, then it will be dangerous. I'm not afraid to go by myself. Batter clock him? Almost done. And the police are on five. Why don't you call them? Who is Hendrix? And where does he go at five in the morning? Hendrick's my uncle. My mother's brother. He's also a fisherman. They leave very early every morning. They both go out at sunrise. Oh, Ellen, you'll love it there. It's where my uncle Henrik and my mama grew up, where my grandparents live. And it's right on the water. If you walk to the edge of the meadow, you can look across to Sweden. So, Henrik, the weather gets you fishing? I'm sending Ingo over to the other children. And she will be bringing a carton of cigarettes. Yes, just one. But there will be others coming too as well, I'm sure. Cigarettes? Uncle Henrik doesn't smoke. No one's had cigarettes since the war started. Hurry and get dressed. Skin down. Make sure you buckle up your coat. We have to run to catch the train. Don't know where. Don't know where. Copenhagen a million times. I mean the real sea, the way it is here, open like this, a whole world of water. Your parents are really city people, aren't they? My mother's afraid of the ocean. She says it's too big for it and way too cold. Look, this leaf may have come from Sweden. It could have blown from a tree into the sweet sea and floated all the way across. See over there, way across the land, see that? That's Sweden. It's not so very far. Maybe there are three girls over there just our age, looking across and saying, that's Denmark. Hello, Sweden! Hello, Sweden! I wonder if one of those boats is your Uncle Henrik's boat. Hello, Sweden! Kirsty! I can't tell. It's too far away. Uncle Henrik's boat is named Ingeborg for Mama. She must be very proud. Does he keep it right here? Does he tie it up so that it won't float away? Oh, no. In town at the harbor, there's a big dock, and all the fishing boats go and come from there. That's where they unload the fish. You should smell it there. And they're all anchored in the harbor. I took Ellen down to share the sea. She's never been that close before. We started to wait, but it was too cold. I should wait for in the summer, then we could swim. It's cold even then. You didn't see anyone, did you? You didn't talk to anyone. I meant to warn you. You must stay away from all people while you were here. But there's no one around here. Even so, if you see anyone, anyone at all, one of Uncle Henrik's friends, someone you know, it's better if you just keep walking. It may be difficult and even dangerous to explain well in it. There are soldiers here, too? I'm afraid so. This is a bad time. But it's a good time for us. Let's go get Uncle Henry. Emery, 
I've been meaning to ask you. What did you do with my necklace? Where did you put it? I hid it in a safe place, but I brought it with me. Here it is. Thank you. Papa gave it to me when I was very small. Oh, I wish I knew where my parents were. I wish they were here with us. They're safe. Papa told us so. They're safe. We have so much out here. Fresh fish, vegetables, eggs. I feel guilty eating so much. I wonder if my parents have enough to eat. Look at this fresh from Blossom. Henry's milk there every morning before he leaves for the boat. And there's butter, too. Usually Henry not even has butter. <coughs> Maybe a little from what? Don't tell me the soldiers tried to. What's the word? Relocate butter, too. I'm afraid so. They, they do. They relocate all the farmer's butter right into the stomach of their army. I suppose if they found out he had saved us just a little bit, they would come in here with their guns and march right away. I wish they would march all this dust away. Kind of seems a wife. He just needs to learn how to take care of himself. Hello? Uncle Henrik! Hello. My, have you grown? You're taller than I am. <laughs> Tell me about those cattle. This is my best friend, Alan. Hello. Now, girls, if you go upstairs, you might find a little something on your bed. You need a wife. Why do I need a wife when I have a sister? I need you to stay home more often. This step is broken. There's a leaking faucet in the kitchen. And there's and mice in the attic. And my brown sweater has a big mob <laughs> on the And if I don't wash the windows... Anyway, I, I've opened every window to let the air and sunshine in. Thank goodness it's such a beautiful day. Tomorrow will be a good day for fishing. The weather is right. But today's a wonderful day for fishing. Indeed it is, Kirsty, but tomorrow will be even better. You see, I'll be going out to the boat tonight after supper. I'll stay out all night. We will leave very, very early in the morning. You prepare the living room? Yes, it is clean. You need the furniture around a bit, a bit to make room. Prepare the living room for what? Why did you move the furniture? Well, girls, it's a sad day. Not too sad, really, because she was very, very old. Tonight, your great aunt Berta will be resting in the living room before she is buried. It's the old custom for the dead to rest at home before they are buried. Right here in this house, a dead person right here? <laughs> <laughs> no great aunt Berta. Never once in all the stories I've heard, in all the pictures I've seen, has there been a great aunt Berta. How brave are you, Henry? Not very. I think that is not true. I think you're like your mama, and like your papa, and like me, frightened but determined. And I think if the time came, you could be very, very brave. I don't know. Well, I do. It's easy to be brave if you do not know everything. So your mama doesn't know everything, neither do I. But, I'm sh but we know only what we need to know. I poor Sir Ega. Maybe you shouldn't understand. This isn't fair. Who died? You guessed correctly. There was no great aunt Berta and never was. Your mama lied to you and so did I. But what about Kirsty? What about Ellen? We didn't tell you to help you to be brave because we love you. Will you forgive us for that? Not, and I'm not going to tell you anymore for the same reason. That is the hearse. The great aunt Berta who never was. So my young friend, it's the time for the night of morning to begin. Are you ready? Not a 
play. He's coming over here. Ben Marie, Kirsty, it's nice to see you. Hello. Did you bring your squeaky old bicycle, Kirsty? And Helen, it's nice to see you too. Even under these circumstances. Especially under these circumstances. I'm glad to be with you. Come on, Amy. Come on, Amy. I should go. Oh, good, they're here. Who? Peter, it's so good to see you. Hello, Anne Marie. Ellen, look who we brought you. Mama, Papa, you're safe, you're here. Ellen, who we're done, how do you do? Hey, talk. We've missed you. I missed you too. Where have you guys been? We're all here. I have to go. God give you day. God give us all day. You go right. You know what to do. Just go. Just go. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye. Why is it not open? Let us open the casket and take one last look at Grant. Well, the doctor said it should be closed, because Grant and Bert are at Tyson. He says there might still be a chance of the germs being there, to still be danger. But what does he you know? Only a country doctor and an old man on that at that. Surely Tyson germs wouldn't linger in the body of a dead person. And dear Aunt Berta, I've been longing to see your face, to kiss her goodbye. Of course we will open the casket. I'm glad you suggested it. Stop that, you foolish woman, to think that we have any interest in seeing the corpse of your deceased aunt. Open it after we leave and put up these candles or pull the curtains.
Okay, she likes it the way my mother bakes it. Sometimes she rolls in breadcrumbs and... Hey, children! No, don't! That's like a hundred spent. My mother bakes it. No, only you. What are you doing in the woods anyway? I'll go hunting to see what was left before I get there with his lunch. Or it's left of his lunch. Can I go now, please? Nay, you say you're good for a daily fish, but not for a soldier of a boy. Where's the meat? You know we have no meat. Your army eats all dinner meat. My dogs smell meat. They smell squirrels in the woods. You should take them hunting. Your uncle has a pretty little lunch, like a woman. Well, what's that there in the bottom? I don't know. Mama's going to be angry that you stopped me and made me play. And you completely ruined Uncle Henry's lunch, and I hope he mad at me, too. Why was this handkerchief so carefully hidden? It wasn't any more hidden than the napkin. I don't know what it is. But stop barking, you idiot dogs. Here, it's only a handkerchief. Oh, God, sniffing at the first thought. Put that in your pocket, Hans. Oh, look at them, sniffing you. Our children seem to want your trousers. Hans, you should take a bath. <laughs> Stop crying, you idiot girl. Your mother has sent you a handkerchief. In Germany, the women have better things to do than staying home handing handkerchiefs for their men. At least you didn't stitch little flowers on it. But go on, go on to your uncle and tell him that the German dogs enjoyed his breath. And I loved his cheese. And that pretty little handkerchief will stop poor hands running nose. <laughs> Tell her we'll try. Take care of your sister. It was just a handkerchief. Now run! 